School of Math Humans, we're going to do 6.4b today. We're going to be continuing our conversation about the fundamental theorem of calculus. This is part two. So we're going to do that. And then I'm going to introduce you to a couple of the basic integration techniques and evaluation techniques. So we've actually kind of seen this before. It's a little bit different than what we saw yesterday in that we're not taking the derivative of the integral. So notice that this is just a straight integral. So this is called the fundamental theorem part two. It says if f is continuous at every point on a closed interval from a to b, and if f is any derivative of the function on a to b, then when I integrate f of x dx from a to b, I get the integral f of b minus the integral f of a. So I'm gonna take the result of my integration and I'm going to evaluate it at B, and I'm going to take the result of my integration, and I'm going to evaluate it at A. All right, so before we actually do that, I would like to introduce some basic integration rules. And again, my heart is a little bit sad because the order of our text is just different than what I'm used to. So let's just get the basic integration rule. So to do that, I want to go back and talk about a derivative. So if I have x to the third and I want to take the derivative of that, the derivative would have been the power goes out front, there's my x, and my power decreases by 1, right? But when I do an integral, remember it is an antiderivative, so that means that it is going in the opposite direction derivative, who can't write. So for an integral, if I have x to the third and I want to integrate that integral from a to b dx, my power is going to go up because the opposite of down is up. So it's going to be x to the fourth divided by the new power and then I'm going to evaluate that from a to b. Okay, notice that I have my evaluation line, top index, bottom index. So this would become b to the fourth over four minus a to the fourth over four. So this is what we've been talking about, the f of b minus f of a. So I'm going to evaluate the integral at the top index, and I'm going to subtract the integral evaluated at a. Alrighty. If I could write that down then as a basic rule, the integral from a to b of u to the n du is going to equal u to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, and then I would evaluate it from a to b. If I have the integral from a to b of a constant, right, so then the constant's going to stay because our properties say that I could pull it out front and so then I'm just going to have du, but if the technically the degree right now is zero, so when I integrate, it's going to go up one, I divide by the new power, and then I would evaluate it at a to b. Okay, so the thing that you have to remember is a derivative goes down in power, an antiderivative or an integral goes up in power. So let's do our first example. So for example number one, I want to evaluate the integral from negative one to three of x cubed plus one dx. Properties of antiderivatives say that I could split this up and technically this would be the integral from negative one to three of x cubed dx plus the integral from negative 1 to 3 of 1 dx. And I can either write it that way or I can just do it from the beginning. So I'm just going to kind of go from the beginning. The at cube is going to go up in power. I divide by the new power. And then I'm going to evaluate from a negative 1 to 3. And then my x, my 1, doesn't have a variable, so now its original power is zero. Now it's going to go up in power. There's the one that's multiplied. Technically, I divide by the new power, 
and I'm going to evaluate from negative 1 to 3. If it had been me, as we get more comfortable with antiderivatives, I would have just said this is a negative 1 to 3, x cubed plus 1 dx is going to be x to the 4th over 4 plus x, and I'm going to evaluate the whole thing from a negative 1 to 3. So just like with derivatives, I take the, der the derivative of each term separately. I'm going to do the same thing with integration. So then this is going to be 3 to the 4th over 4 plus 3 minus a negative 1 to the 4th over 4 plus a negative 1. So it's the top index subtract the bottom index. So 3 to the 4th is 81 over 4 plus 3. A negative 1 to the 4th is a positive 1 fourth. This makes it negative. This is a negative 1. That makes it a positive 1. And then I would be lazy and evaluate that. And then <laughs> when I do that, I'm going to get 96 over 4, which is 24. So then when I report, I would say the negative 1 to 3 of f of x dx is equal to 24. Alrighty, now we're going to do our second example. And the second example, the second and third example, really have some semantics that we need to pay very close attention to. So for example number 2, I want to find the area of the region between, and this is the semantics that I talked about, between the curve of y is equal to 4 minus x squared from 0 to 3 and the x-axis. So if we look at what this graph would look like, so here's my handy dandy 4 minus x squared is an upside down parabola, right? So it's a negative x squared, it's y-intercept is 4. It's going to look like this, and I'm going to evaluate it from 0 to 3. Noticing that I have some area up there and some area down there. But because this includes the word between and and, I'm going to split this up because I have a point of my graph changes. So I'm going to write that the area is equal to, my x-intercept is 2, I could find that algebraically, the integral from 0 to 2 of 4 minus x squared dx, and then I'm going to integrate from 2 to 3, but I'm going to do the absolute value of 4 minus x squared dx. So the way that I think about this is I'm looking for the total area. I'm not looking for the net area. Okay, the total area means that everything needs to be positive. The net area would mean the, the net effect of having positive and negative. So now if I integrate this, my area is going to equal, that goes up a power divided by its new power, which is 1, minus x cubed divided by his new power, and I'm going to evaluate from 0 to 2, and then I'm going to have plus, and I'm going to put it in absolute value bars. I'm going to have 4x minus x cubed over 3, and then I'm going to evaluate from 2 to 3. Alrighty, so I'm going to continue on to my next page. So if I set that up, I'm going to have 8 minus the 8 thirds, so that's from my first integral. And then because both terms have an x in it, when I subtract the bottom index, it's just 0. Then I'm going to have a plus, and I have 4 times 3 is 12 minus 27 over 3 because 3 cubed is 27. And then I'm going to subtract the 8, which is 4 times 2 is 8, minus 8 thirds, and I'm going to take the absolute value. When I do all of that math, I'm going to get the 23 over 3. 
So the words that we have to be careful of are total and net. Total means that everything should be positive. Net means the net effect. So what happens when I have positive and negative? All right, so this is my answer for this one. But we do have to be careful about the semantics of math as I reach for another pen, sorry. So let's do our next example. Example number three says find the area of the region. My pen's not working so great. Between the curve y is equal to x cosine of 2x and the x-axis over a negative 3 to 3. Now because this is not a simple integration, we're going to do this on our grapher. We will learn how to do that in a few short sections, but for right now, we're going to do our grapher. I'm, I am going to set up my equation, though. So my area is going to equal the integral from a negative 3 to 3. And I'm going to do absolute value x cosine of 2x dx. So remember, between and and means that I'm looking for a total area, not the net effect. And so let's just put this in our grapher, okay? So I'm going to go to my y equals, and I'm going to enter math number, there's my absolute, and I'm going to do x cosine to x, close, and then I'm going to get outside of that, and I'm going to quit. Now I'm going to do math 9, and I'm going to integrate from a negative 3 to 3. I'm going to use the function that I put in my y1, and then I'm going to do dx. I will tell you as we do integration or when we did our Riemann sums, uh, putting the equation in your Y1 makes putting doing integration or evaluating functions easier because I have less buttons that I need to push overall. And then when I do that math and my calculator thinks about what it's doing because he's still thinking and thinking and thinking. Wow, he's still thinking. I'm going to write the answer down. Oh, there it is. Whew. I was going to say it's taken a long time. So my area is equal to, from a negative 3 to 3, is equal to 5.425. All right. So it is interesting that our calculator had to think about that. So now what I'd like to do is I'm going to go back and do my x cosine of x of 2x and I'm going to do a zoom 7 just to look at the function. So the top one is the absolute value because the absolute value is making everything positive. The second one is my if I had not put in the absolute value and the colors aren't coming through very clear but this one is dark blue, this one is red. So this is the original function. This is what happens when I turn everything positive. Alrighty. So now I want to use the same example and I want to expand on it a little bit. So what if the, it had been written a little bit differently? What if it said, find the area under the curve from y is equal to 4 minus x squared from 0 to 3. And I guess I could have done the same example, but this was the one that we did earlier. I would write that my area is going to equal the integral from 0 to 3 of 4 minus x squared in parentheses dx. And then I would do this math I can either do it by hand or in my grapher. This is going to be 4x to the 1 divided by 1 minus x to the 3rd divided by 3 evaluated from 0 to 3. And when I do that math and finish, I would get 3. 
but notice the difference in the way the problems are written. This one is saying between an and. This one is just saying find the area under the curve. Finding the area under the curve in this book is the second fundamental theorem of calculus, and I just do math, right? The first fundamental theorem of calculus, part one, was when we take the derivative of an integral. All right, my dears, that's it for today. I will see you soon.